Hello, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Plumline broadcast. I am your host, Magdalena Rodriguez, and we are here tonight, this Thursday evening, woohoo, excited mm -hmm. and waiting because mm -hmm. I know that the Lord has something special for us tonight with our guest, Jennifer. Uh, Foster, that is a puzzle, Jennifer Foster. Um, I love this woman. She's an amazing powerhouse. Um, I love her spirit. And, you know, every time we get together, talk even from the last time, you know, it's just like, bam. Yeah, amen, <laughs> but, amen. But it's so good because, you know, we can never get enough once you start talking about the Lord. You know, it's just, oh my God, you can't even, sometimes you'll be like, okay, we, we got to reel it back in again, you know. But, <laughs> Praise God. I know that many are coming on. You're from either the Facebook group or from YouTube. Um, please share if you're able to. I also have this on my timeline. So you can share from there if you're not able to share it from the Plum Line broadcast because it is private uh, group. Um, so please share from my timeline if possible, if not from YouTube. So again, welcome. Hello, Tina. Welcome to the broadcast. I'm glad you're on here. Um, again, I want to welcome my guest, Apostle Jennifer Foster. And I just want to um, get into it because I know you have a lot to share so I just want, you know, you to just kind of, you know, flow as the Holy Spirit leads you. Just let the our audience know a little bit about you and your ministry, yeah. what you're doing for the Lord and for the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Apostle Maggie, for having me with you tonight. It's an honor to be with you. And uh, yeah, praise the Lord. I believe that when we first met, the Lord just kind of knitted our hearts, you know, and I know we haven't been together, you know, like actually yet, but I just know we would throw down in the kitchen too because we Latinos can throw down. So well, well you throw down cooking and I'll throw down eating. Yeah. <laughs> we'll call labor in that way. Come on. <laughs> awesome. But I also live in Florida, like Apostle Maggie. I actually live in Jacksonville alongside my husband and our three children. And I'm the co-founder of the Fire Ministries International. I'm also the host of Blazing the Trail on Facebook, as well as on Eternal Life Television. And then um, I'm also a, a teacher of the word, a prophetic mm -hmm. psalmist. Um, and that's just sort of what the Lord has given me as an assignment. Um, the Lord will send me into different regions and I'll, I'll preach, I'll teach, I'll prophesy. And then many times the Lord will have me release a song of healing over the land and over individuals. So that's, it's just my heart. I started as a worship leader at a young age and then the Lord just kind of developed the calling from there and made it more, uh, you know, more evident that he was calling me into the apostolic office as the years have passed. So we give him all the glory. Amen. And none of it is mine. I'm just, I'm just using it for now. I'm just Amen. holding on to the gift and, and, and passing it around as a blessing unto yes. anyone who will receive. Amen. Wow, I'm gonna have to hear. I'm gonna have to put a request to hear uh, the prophetic psalmist from you. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard you sing. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's awesome. I think that's a beautiful gift. You know, I always say, Lord, I wish you would have gave me a voice to sing, but I do sound good in the shower. And, it, and, you know, I sound amazing. I say my voice filters through the second, third heaven, and I sound like an angel after that. <laughs> But amen. Amen. So again, you know, Apostle, you release whatever the Lord has placed in your heart. Um, I'm, I'm, I believe we're all looking forward to that. Amen. Thank you so much uh, for having me today. And, you know, the Lord has been dealing with me uh, for a few weeks now on the subject of uh, reformation. Mm. Um, we are in a new era and we're even getting ready to go into a new year. Um, and I believe that there is order and there is things that we must do first to prepare ourselves and to prepare our hearts in order to enter into the new thing that God is wanting to do. Yeah. So, you know, um, on, the, on Halloween, I shared a, a shorter message on reformation, but I believe the Lord wants me to go even deeper tonight as to mm -hmm. what it means, what, what is a reformation and what it means to be a reformer, but also from his perspective and from his heart, because I know oftentimes the world has their definition. 
yes. about reformation and change and, you know, being, you know, different and, and, and breaking ground means. But the Lord has his definition and the Lord has his purpose for raising up reformers in this hour. So yes. uh, what is the reformation? I mean, a reformation is a change for the better. Mm. The reason why there needs to be a change is usually because we have outgrown the current model. So whatever it is that we are operating in now is no longer serving the purpose. It might have served the purpose for a season, for a time, but there comes a time where we outgrow that model and it's no longer putting out what it was meant to put out. You know, and when I think of this too, I think of, you know, you and I being moms, you know, how, how long were we supposed to carry our babies for? The Lord had us carry our baby for 40 weeks. Some of us a little longer, some of us a little okay. shorter, but overall, 40 weeks is the ideal time. Yeah. And we see that when we give birth to something too soon, mm. it, it does not come out looking right. When mm -hmm. it's rushed, it, it usually has to go through a time of rest. It has to go sometimes even through a time of resuscitation. And yeah. many times it won't even make it if it's too premature. Wow. So there yeah. is a reason why God has an order. And even within that pregnancy, he also has an order of trimesters. He will do certain things within each trimester. And as that trimester comes to a close, he will work in another thing. So there is order. There is a blueprint even in the development of a child. And many times yeah. I think we are ignorant to the fact that there is also a blueprint in, into the development of our calling and our ministries and our families. But the reason why we must build with the Lord is because at the beginning of time, there was people that tried to build apart from God. Mm. And I also want to share tonight on uh, the difference between true reformation, led of Holy Ghost versus a conquering, subduing earthly kingdoms that is led by selfish and an agenda of impure ambition. Mm. And We've seen in the past, you know, in our time, leaders, they have rose into preeminence and people thought of them as being reformers. Right. And, you know, some of these people we can think of as people that people thought were great leaders, like everyone thought that Adolf Hitler was a great leader mm. until he killed the six million Jews. You know, everybody thought Che yeah. Guevara was a great leader until he led people into such mm -hmm. poverty and such terrible things. People even thought that, you know, the Venezuelan leader was going to be a great, wonderful leader, Hugo Chavez. But what he did to the country Jesus. was so disastrous. Yeah. And so we must be discerning as people Come of God Come on. to know when we are building with God, being sent by God, being given the blueprint from God. Versus when we have an impure motive and an impure agenda and we just want to do things to dominate, to have control and to establish our dominion in a Luciferian way. Mm. So um, in Genesis 10, 8 to, 11, um, 8 to 10, we see the story of Nimrod. Mm -hmm. And Nimrod was actually a descendant of Noah. And even though the Lord had established a great plan for Noah and his family, Nimrod was crooked in his ways because of what his great uh, grandfather had done. So Noah was a great grandfather of Nimrod, but mm -hmm. Nimrod's grandfather was a wicked man. So it says they called and I'm reading here from Genesis 10. It says they called the tower Babel, the gate to heaven. But what God called it was babbling, which means confusion. Yeah. For there God confused the language of the people, which forced them to scatter. So this heaven-defying group of people wanted a government to rule the world in a one-world religion. Mm -hmm. And this is also a foreshadow of what we will see in the end times with the Antichrist religion and the one-world government. So we see here that the enemy was even at that time overplaying his hand. Yes. yes. <laughs> he was trying to establish something yeah. that was meant to be at the end time. Mm -hmm. It was already prophetically released and written in heaven. And the enemy wanted to set something mm -hmm. up before its time. And yes. he failed in his agenda. 
So what happens here is that the Lord raises up a man of God to take down Nimrod. But Nimrod had made an evil alliance with his mother, Semiramis. And in order to make an evil alliance and strengthen it even more through perversion, he actually went as far as marrying his mother. Mm, wow. And when yeah. the man of God sees that Nimrod has done all this evil, he rises up and he slays Nimrod. He was slain. And at the death of Nimrod, when everyone saw that this this kingdom had basically crumbled, they were afraid that they would suffer the same fate. Semiramis comes up with a, an evil scheme and she devises a plan and, and puts together a lie. And she says that what happened is that Nimrod had to die in order for him to go up to the sun. And that when Nimrod went up to the sun, he became the sun. And then a sun ray came down and impregnated her. And right around that time, she had become pregnant, right? Shortly after Nimrod was dead. And so people in the land began to deify Semiramis and Nimrod. And that is where the worship of the sun and the worship of Baal originated. Wow. And so it began as a quest to try to get up close to God without God telling me how to reach him. Hmm. And when God saw that rebellion, he confused our language. And then later on, God placed in the heart of the man of God to come after Nimrod and slay him because of his wickedness. And so it became a common practice through this lie from Semiramis that people would worship her and they would worship Nimrod. And this was the first couple that was deified after they had become rulers. And from there on, it just got worse and worse and worse with each passing generation. Because when it comes to iniquity, when you do not cut mm -hmm. off that wicked bloodline, yes, each yes. passing generation gets stronger and more wicked. So I shared about uh, two, three weeks ago now. It's going to be three weeks on Jezebel and Ataliah and how Jezebel was a wicked queen. But because she married a Jewish king from the, the, the line of David, David's line had been given a promise. And this king marries this woman in order to avoid uh, political chaos and to make things in the land a little bit more bearable. He makes an alliance with her. So mm -hmm. in order for them to avoid having to do things difficultly, he compromises. And then the daughter that is born of them is Ataliah. And Ataliah is uh, even more wicked. She is even worse than Jezebel. So Jezebel and, and Ahab were the parents of Ataliah. And this Jewish king goes and he marries, Jeroboam marries Ataliah. And when Jeroboam dies because of not being willing to repent from wickedness of having married this wicked king and leading people into the worship of Baal even more than his uh, former kings the woman rises up to power shortly after her own son dies and she slays all her grandchildren in order to remove every inheritance every trace of anyone who could come to the kingdom and take the throne before she does mm. so again a reformer must know that they 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 are building with Holy Spirit and with the Lord as their partner and as their chief builder that he's the one who is the architect of everything because when you begin to build through Baal mm. the structure becomes perverted and the foundation is based on you rather than glory unto the Lord Yes, my goodness. And so, um, you know, we see also in the, in John uh, 14, 6, that Jesus said, I am the way. Mm -hmm. I am the truth and I am the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. 
And then in John 10, he also said, truly, I tell you, whoever does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs some other way, mm -hmm. is a thief and a robber. But the one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and mm -hmm. leads him out. So mm. he's the one who leads us out. That's we right. do not lead ourselves out into this quest of reformation. So mm. the Lord is the one who raises up the reformer. The reformer does not raise himself up. Wow. And throughout the process of reformation, the reformer is listening to the shepherd's voice to see what the shepherd is saying. Mm -hmm. Because if the shepherd says, okay, now turn left and you're still going right, you're going to run right off a cliff. That's right. That's right. And, you know, I just <laughs> and many times we have seen those illustrations, you know, with this cute little sheep, all sweet. And then he's got his head stuck in the fence. So he's like stuck <laughs> down a hole. And I yeah. even saw like this little YouTube clip recently where there was this sheep like halfway down his body into this like groove in the ground and the shepherd's yanking at him by the legs and by the legs and as soon as he puts him on the ground the sheep jumps again and falls right back in <laughs> and i'm over here like oh lord how often yeah do this? How yes. often do you say okay go the other way now and we're like no lord i went to school for four years praise god let me go mm -hmm. Boom, right back in the hole no um. lord Jesus. I am this. I am that. I am an apostle. I know what to do. I don't need to pray. Mm -hmm. Let me go. Boom. Right into the hole. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Yes. That is so our true. own understanding, our own enlightenment mm. is not coming from the Lord at that point. It's coming from the worship of sun, from the worship of Baal, mm -hmm. from the worship of accomplishments, placing mm -hmm. our identity in our titles, placing our identity, you know, in our experiences and what yes. the world taught us in a model, whatever model that might be. And then we end up falling into the hole. And then not only are we not happy falling into the hole, we want to bring other people right into the hole with us. <laughs> yes. So, you know, we form a network of hole dwellers. Praise God, join the network of hole dwellers. We're all dwelling in the hole, praising Jesus together. And we call it church, and we call it kingdom, and we call it ecclesia. My goodness. But it's confusion. Yes. Because yes. we authored it. God didn't mm -hmm. author it. We That's did right. it. We wanted something to do to make us feel important, you know. Mm. If man feels important through activity, if there ain't no activity right. going on, there must be something wrong. Yes, that's why the enemy knows how to he knows how to get us busy enough, you know, and sometimes we call it that we have momentum and we're yes. moving in a direction. And in reality, the busy the busyness is a trap. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Because if the Lord doesn't author the vision, then you're building on Baal, you're not building on the Lord. You're building on a foundation of Babylon, of earthly thinking and intellectualism. And the Lord didn't call you to do it. He's not going to bless it. And let me say that again. If the Lord didn't call you to do it, he's not going to bless it. No. If he's not in it, he's not going to put his his you know seal of approval on it. He's not going to send you people to help you with it. No, you're going to be grinding and grinding and grinding. And it's not to say that pioneers don't go through a difficult season of mm -hmm. building because they do. A pioneer is there to break ground and breaking ground isn't easy. No. But the Lord gives you the strength and the grace to break it when it's a grind all the time and the Lord is nowhere to be found. Chances mm -hmm. are he didn't call you to do it. You're wow. doing it on yourself because you yeah. need the affirmation. <laughs> <laughs> you need to be seen doing something in order to yeah. prove that you are, you yeah. know, fulfilling something that God never called you to do. Mm, that's so dangerous right there. We don't know the dangers of, of putting our hands to something that God has not called us to. Because it's not even so much about us. That's right. Because in reality, it's um, those that are connected to you or you're trying to connect with, you know, they, they're also in that danger as well. That's right. Amen. Wow. So when I think of a true reformer, Apostle, I think of Elijah. Because Elijah went against the current when it was very popular to go with Baal and to go with Jezebel. And so Elijah wasn't PC. He was willing to stand up to the prophets of Baal mm -hmm. and to challenge them, challenge the status quo. 
and to say, this is what the Lord says, and I'm not moving from here. Mm. But oftentimes, as leaders in the body of Christ, we are taking temperatures. Okay, what yeah. is the world saying? What is popular right now? What is so-and-so mm-hmm. across the street preaching? Is their church bigger than mine? Oh, praise God, I'm going to start doing what they do. Never mind, that's not the, bond, the model the Lord gave me for building. It's working for them. I'm going to try it. And then we, we fall into confusion listening to all these voices, uh-huh. taking polls. What is, what is society? What are the millennials? What is Gen Z doing? What is this? What is that? Instead of building kingdom, we end up building fan clubs and we end up creating clicks that are not part of the Lord's heart. Yes. And so it wasn't PC to defy Jezebel, but he did not care. He was more impressed with God than Jezebel was impressed with herself. Mm. And so I shared earlier and I want to share it again. I want to say this again. The more ma- you mature in the Lord, the less you idolize man. That's right. That is so true. I had to give a big amen on that one on Facebook. <laughs> That was so good. Yes, that is so true. But wow. that is a, a sign of immaturity. When mm-hmm. we are taking opinion posts in order to see whether or not we're going to build a certain way or whether or not we're even going to step out at all. Well, God, do you want me to do it right now? Well, people ain't ready for it. People are not wanting that. People are still mm-hmm. over here wanting to do this. I, I do it in six months. Wow. And they're ready for it. And the Lord is saying, are you go when, when I tell you. Because your obedience is not just in the assignment. Your obedience is in the timing of you starting to build. Because yeah. before you ever build it this way, you must lay down a strong foundation. And that That's takes right. time. Yes, and so does. you need to do that yourself in the secret place. And you know this, Apostle Maggie. Mm-hmm. Before the Lord released you to build any business, to build anything, to do your ministry, he worked on you first. Yes, he did. And it was a while. It took a while. <laughs> It, it does. It does. You know, back when the Lord called me to ministry in 2002, I was like 20. And praise God. I promise you, Paul. So I, I just about ran to Vista Print and printed me out all these business cards to start passing out to people. Praise <laughs> the Lord. He called me to the nations, everybody. I am taking speaking engagements starting now. Where Ooh. is my outdoor tent? Somebody Ooh. called me Ryan Harbonke. He knows how to do this thing. Yes. And in our immaturity, yes. we think it's going to be tomorrow. We yes. think the Lord said, okay, you're going to do this one day. It happens now. Mm. 18 years. I know. 18 years. Mm-hmm. And I'm just now starting to see the beginning stages of that. Yes. It's just now starting to bud. Mm. But <laughs> in my immaturity, many times I try to launch prematurely mm-hmm. oh yeah. it would fall apart and i would cry and i would run and oh, everybody's against me they don't want parade oh, they don't get it <laughs> they don't know my heart oh yeah. and, then he, and then he goes touch not my anointed do my prophets no harm don't touch me. oh you don't went touch there me. you used that or you no. used that line. oh my and judge me not i'm the lord's anointed and if you don't receive me you are so because i am david <laughs> <laughs> my goodness wow i get you though yeah and grow up yes i, I believe a lot of us have been there i think we've all kind of went that route <laughs> we do because we don't understand you know we everybody want to be david everyone everybody be Moses. everybody want to be joseph mm-hmm. nobody wants to be in the pit nobody mm-hmm. wants to be in the desert <laughs> No. Nobody wants to have to be in the back of the desert with no. the dirty sheep, fighting the lion, fighting the bear, learning your skill. Nobody wants that part. No. Everybody just wants the stage. But the Lord can't trust you with the stage if he can't trust you with his heart first. Let me say that mm-hmm. again. The Lord cannot trust you with the stage if he cannot trust you with his heart first. Wow. That's where it starts. Yes. And we get it wrong because we live in a narcissistic society mm. it's all me 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 gimme 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 see look at me look at me filters filters <laughs> camera drama you know we we do the uh what was it back in the 90s oh i'm aging myself boss <laughs> we do the vote Oh my yeah. God! That was when Madonna, yeah. right? When she had that song, I forgot I, the song. She had Madonna. Yes, Ooh, we song. we we got it down. We're walking like an Egyptian. Oh my God! <laughs> and we think we cute doing it too. 
Oh my, my, It'd be my. so anointed and the Lord is saying, sit down. That's a mess. You're embarrassing me right now. <laughs> sit down. Let's talk about wow. this. Let's yeah. go back to that prayer closet. Yeah. We yeah. need to process you a little longer. Let's get you back on that potter's wheel. We mm. got to mold you just a bit more. Let me add a little mm. water. You ain't drowning. You'll be all right, baby. Yes. <laughs> yes. I got yes. you. But no, I want to do it now, Lord. And he's saying, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. I am your exceeding great reward. Mm -hmm. It's not even what I called you to do for me. It is me. I am the reward. Amen. Amen. My God. And that's so key when we can embrace him as the reward because he is, for, well, I'm going to speak for myself. He is my portion. Amen. He is my treasure. And that is the reward in itself, you know, and it's, I think once we get there and a, a lot of it is dying to this flesh that we're wrapped in, right. You know, it's when the Lord, you know, he kind of pokes us and say, okay, now you're ready. <laughs> Okay, now you're good, you know, because everything about us, you know, our ambitions and what we think ministry supposed to look like, you know, um, and you quickly find out, okay, that it's not all that glamorous as people present it to be. Oh, yeah. Is it a blessing? Absolutely. It's always a blessing when your heart is to do the Father's will, regardless of the persecution you may come across, the slander and all that other right. stuff that, you know, comes along with that, especially when you are speaking the Father's heart and you're not right. going with the trend, um, but you're standing on the word of the Lord, you know, you quickly find out that there's much of a price that you pay to walk you know, in that mm -hmm. narrow path, you know, right. and many people don't want to walk in it, especially even in leadership and reforming mm -hmm. and building, you know, you're always looking for shortcuts, even yep. to build a foundation, you know, and, right. and I'll say it like this, you know, I remember, uh, I don't know if it was a year ago or two, I had put mm -hmm. that, um, whatever you use to um, lay a foundation, you're going to always have to um, use that. For instance, if you are trying to gather people and build on a foundation based mm -hmm. on entertainment, mm -hmm. guess what? Entertainment, you're going to have to continue to provide so the people can remain. Come on, you know? you're preaching my sermon now. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna be quiet. I'm gonna I'm be getting quiet. To that. I'm getting to that. Wait, wait, wait. Let me tag you in. Let me tag you in. Come on, let me tag you right in. <laughs> This is what happens when you preach with prophetic and apostolic. You you never finish your message because they done preached it for you because we're all in the same vein. Yeah. The Lord is speaking to us all in the same things. Yeah. He's pulling yes. at our hearts. Mm, come on. And he's checking our motives. He's saying, hey, it starts with you. Yes, it does. Oh, yeah, yeah. The blessing froze from the top. Guess mm -hmm. what? The curse froze from the top, too. Mm-hmm. You got to be so careful. You got to be so careful. That is so true. So, so true. We can't leave people in a place we, ha we have not been. That's right. You know, you I, I, <laughs> it's like you you sort of kind of uh, become an Ezekiel where the Lord begins to give you your messages for you to eat. You eat it. He gives you that scroll and That's believe right. me, it is bitter in the stomach, but mm -hmm. you eat it, you digest it for what? Mm -hmm. So then Ezekiel turned around and gave the message to the stiff necked people. You know, and it's just like we become that message. There is no shortcut to this. That's right. This is not something that you can go and Google and try to find. And listen, because I say this because I'm sure this has been done where people are Googling things and Google is your friend for a lot of stuff, but it's not a, a, a place where you're trying to tap into an anointing because no. there's no anointing in there. No. Taking someone else's message and trying no. to make it your own is not going to bring you anointing either. That's you right. may have charisma in how That's you right. are releasing it because anybody mm -hmm. can shout and scream and you know, say a hallelujah in between to get the emotions riled up yeah. and get an amen. But the anointing is when you eat of it first mm -hmm. and that and, and you walk it out and you become that <laughs> message. And believe me, it is not fun. It yeah. is one of those places that, you know, I can only um, kind of compare it. And maybe this is not a very good comparison because, you know, 
when the Lord was was praying Gethsemane and he was he was trembling because he knew the cup that he was about to drink. Right. Yeah. You know, Lord, not my will, but yours was his response, although he's like, take this cup away from me. Right. You know, and many times when we you know when we're in that place, we're like, oh, my God, I don't know how I'm going to do it. But Lord, and you know that is necessary. You see, yeah. the fire is hot. But see you know what is required. So you you think of those also that are going mm -hmm. to receive from you because it's not even about you. That's you know, right. so it's just, you wind up saying that same prayer, Lord, let not be my will, but let your will be done. And you go Amen. through it. You go through it. Amen. And you know, as you're talking, uh, Apostle Maggie, the Lord just whispered to me the reason why the scroll is better is because it's killing your flesh. Yeah. Jesus, they don't on. feel good to your flesh. Oh, Jesus, this it's good to you. It's good for your heart. Oh, it's good for your spirit, but your flesh hates it mm. because there is not sugar coated. Mm -mm. It ain't tickling your ears. It ain't making you feel good. Right. Convicting right. you. It's Come setting on. you right. The Lord's sitting you down, making you eat your veggies. <laughs> <laughs> veggies nobody likes, right? <laughs> no sugar in those peas. Hallelujah. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Little butter in those green beans. Glory to God. <laughs> we need it. Wow. We yes. need those spiritual vitamins. And those are the ones we want to skip. Yes. Yes. Wow. Wow. That is so good. It's true. You know, there's no mixture. You know, they cannot. It purifies. Mm -hmm. You know, it does. Because, you know, a true word of the Lord, you know, when it when you're chewing on it, you're so right. The flesh, everything that tries to come, because you know how we can do so easily. You know, it's like God gives us a message, and we think we could add to it to make it a little oh, bit more fiery yeah. and powerful, right? You know, we can add something onto it, and it's just like, no, not in this. This is the pure, unadulterated word of God, His mm -hmm. message that's gonna come through. You know, without our little fleshy parts <laughs> trying to that's mix right. in there. But Amen. wow, that's really good, though. Amen. Amen. I would see the only part of the word that we're writing through our lives. It's Acts 29. Mm. <laughs> that's really the only one. There ain't going to be no John 22 later on. Wow. But Acts 29 is today. It's what we're doing. It's how we're living. It's, it's what we're walking out. We are the church of Acts. Yes. Yes. And we need to stay in that straight, in that straight and narrow Mm. You know, another thing that the Lord has been dealing with me for many years, and uh, and I don't know if you're familiar, uh, Apostle, with the uh, Seven Mountain Mandate. I'm sure yes. you've heard yes. of it. Yes. But that that is there, not just as a good plan or a good idea. Mm. But there is literally cultural transformation that steps out when we go through through this and we step out in our mountain. And for those who don't know, uh, this is a vision and a um, and a model that was given to Bill Bride of Campus Crusade for Christ, yeah. Lauren Cunningham of Youth with a Mission uh, back in 1975. And they had yeah. very similar dreams, very similar visions. Oh, the Lord was orchestrating all of this. And what the Lord revealed to them is that there are seven mountains within our society. That's right. There are mountains that influence every sphere of our society and as go these mountains so goes our individual lives as a society um, yeah so these, these mountains are the mountain of religion the mountain of family the mountain of education the mountain of government yes. media arts and entertainment and then the mountain of um of um <clears throat> business and what the Lord was was uh, has been speaking to me uh, regarding the mountain of religion is that the true worship of God needs to take place. Yeah. We have been leading people into too many church growth models, but we have not been leading people into an encounter with the heart of the Father. Mm -hmm. And so there is a lot of information. There is a lot of inspiration taking place, but this information and this inspiration is making people narcissistic. Yes. It's not yeah. bringing people to a place of surrender. It's not bringing people to a place of healing from brokenness. It's not pulling people away from performance. Mm. If anything, it's, it's making people even more performance driven because wow. we are not doing it with his heart. We are doing it with growth and goals. That's right. As, as our quest. So we're yeah. just trying to grow a bigger, a, a bigger enterprise. We're not mm -hmm. looking at the souls. 
Mm-mm-mm. And so we are goal based rather than growth based. Jesus, come and, on. and that is so unhealthy because the mm-hmm. church should not be a business and enterprise. The church should be a family in which we can all grow, in which yeah. we can all mature, in which we can all receive. And uh, part of the word that the Lord gave me for 2021 at the beginning of the year, Apostle, was that he said the year of the wild conquest. Mm. And he said many streams coming into one river. That's right. The year in which Mm -hmm. no one was going to feel disenfranchised or like their voice did not matter. But we've come to rely so much on pyrotechnics, on cookies, on donuts, on programs. And I ain't against no cookies, no bake sale. I'm not going to go knock over your your table of cookies and whip you out of the temple. Okay, if, you, if you're doing a bake sale, raising money for missions, I ain't coming in there to knock it over. I'm not against right. that. But when that takes precedence over the princess of God, we have missed mm-hmm. it. Yes, we, we have, have missed it because the church is full, but people are just as demonized as they were last week. Yes. And yeah, that is so, that is so key. That is so key, you know, and I, and I just want to go back. Yes. To those seven mountains, you know, we do a cry out for the seven mountains. We do them quarterly, you know, and we come out and that's one of the things the Lord showed me is that as, as we're call ourselves ambassadors, we call ourselves all these titles and we remain in one mountain and is that mountain of religion. And we still mm-hmm. can't even conquer that one. Mm-hmm. We still can't make an impact and influence because we have allowed religion to come and build upon. And just reminds me of what you started out with the tower of Babel, where mm-hmm. there's so much confusion because mm-hmm. so much, so many people are building upon their, um, ideologies of what a foundation, what a church should be and all this other stuff. And they're trying to make it relevant that in reality, you know, we we see a lot of world inside the building because we are the church. Okay. And there's a lot of confusion because you have, Mm -hmm. you know, so many people teaching different things and there's so many different opinions and views that you have a lot of people that are confused like Babel because there's a lot of Babel that does happen. Yes. Again, you know, here we are with those seven mountains of influence. God has given us the power and the authority to go and impact these mountains, these seven cultures that we have of society. Mm -hmm. But we have been focused just on the religion aspect of it. And it's just like, okay, well, let's reform what's happening. I really believe Mm -hmm. that, yes, we are in that time of reformation. Things cannot be the same. Things cannot, it, it, you know, there's things that, you know, serve this, its purpose for a time. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. That's great. You yeah. know, another thing that, you know, I really believe in this is what the Lord is showing. We're always trying to build upon someone else's foundation, meaning here we're trying to bring revival from the Brownsville, from the Azusa, <laughs> and from all these past revivals. Listen, they were amazing. They were great. And they served this purpose then. But why are we trying to rediscover these ancient wells when the Lord says there's new ones to cover, to uncover, where mm. we can come in and, and God is, and you know, we're so good, Apostle, when we're talking about God's doing a new, a new thing, but yet we're still remaining in the old. So That's it's right. just like, how can God do something new? We're restricting him still to work according to how he did things back then. He wants right. to do something different now. And I really believe, again, with 2020 and COVID, this was a shaking of the foundations. <laughs> was it not? I tell you. Absolutely. Some people, some people got it, right? Some people yeah. got the revelation. And Come then you on. have some people that still stuck. They're still trying to get back to the old. They're still waiting oh. for normal to show up. And to be normal again, when normal was the very thing that got us in the condition that we're in. Come on. So it's time for us to shift and move according to the Holy Spirit and how he wants to do things. Amen. Amen. And it starts with us. Amen. Yeah. Because many times people want to reform the church, but they don't want to reform themselves. themselves. Oh, it's the pastor's fault. Oh, it's the pastor's fault. Yes. Everything's the pastor's fault. Oh, no. the pastor this, the pastor that. Never mm-hmm. mind. I'm reading my horoscope in the morning and asking the prophet for a word in the afternoon. Jesus. Oh, but it's the pastor's fault. Yes, yes. Pastor didn't have enough of this. Pastor didn't do enough of that. Oh, but mm-hmm. I'm still watching Harry Potter. And oh, I'm still messing with the football. 
Listen, I done went to messing with people's libraries and I, I, yes. Mm. Yes. yeah, I'm looking at that entertainment center full of all them horror movies. Mm. And we look just as much as the world, but well, God, why won't you move in my life? Quit burning that sage. Whoa, my goodness. Yeah. Quit with all your little saint candles. Stop mm. messing with that Ouija board. Jesus. You know, we, Jesus. we're like so, we're like so many times. The Lord ain't with us no more. So we go to the witch to ask, mm. hey, what the Lord's saying now. My God. We can't. My we can't. There is confusion there because is. we are not willing to walk in holiness. We no. are not willing to walk in consecration. We okay. want it now. We want it now. We want to skip everything. You just said a bad word. Oh, we consecration. To, I'm sorry. We, we don't, that. Wait, we don't wait, say wait. that no more. We have to bleep that. <laughs> We're going to have to cut that part out. We got to cut that part out because unfortunately, you know, it's sad to say, but when you speak about holiness, when you speak yeah. about consecration, when you speak about sanctification, people e immediately want to label Apostle Jennifer as legalistic. Oh. as holy out thou and you know you're you know unfortunately people don't want to hear and i'm not gonna say all because it's not everybody you do have yeah. those people that want to live in that place you know of because it's not about religion it's about relationship because yeah. you love the lord and you do want to be separate you want to be consecrated unto the lord you know but unfortunately you're right reformation begins as an individual how is it possible because don't we say that we're the body of christ that's right. So if we're the body of Christ, guess what? Apostle Jennifer, you got to individually have reformation. I have to come to a place of reformation. Every part of the body has to come to an individual reformation. So then together and collectively, we can now stand as reformers, reformed Amen. body of Christ Amen. so that we can move. Amen. Yes. Amen. Everybody plays their part, but we can't just blame the head for everything. No. No, mm -hmm. no, no. And we want to do that. You know, we use it as a cop out. Oh, the pastor this, the pastor that. The apostle this, the apostle that. They doing this. They... No, no, no. What about your personal responsibility? Yes. And, you know, and, and even beyond that, <clears throat> the mountain of family, mm. that in and of itself is such a mess. Yes. Because we got kids yelling at parents, telling them, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. The parent runs to, to do everything the kid want to do. Ah. Uh. Jesus, come on. There is no discipline. There is no order. Jezebel is running rampant in the home. Mm -mm. The man has been castrated from his authority. Jesus. The kids and the Jezebel running the show. And the man over there in, in the corner making all the money like a slave. And they just out blowing all the money. Blowing all the money on stupid things. Talking wow. about, oh, we, we. We, we are so blessed because we our kids are like in 50 different sports. We ain't got no time for church. But oh, our, we're blessed because we're driving a Mercedes. we blessed because we live in wow. this neighborhood. we blessed because we have a, a golf membership. You ain't blessed. <laughs> That's not a blessing. Wow. That's just earthly possessions. Yes, yes. That's not the blessing according to the word. Mm. That's nice things you can have and the Lord can give you that. But the blessing is when your family is whole. Mm. Amen. When the man is walking in his role as the priest of the home, when the woman is fulfilling her role, when the children are in submission, when everybody's working together to bring God glory, because without a strong family, we can't have a strong church. No, we, can't. And we don't have and we can't have strong communities or no. regions or nations because it begins in inside the home. It does as individuals, as families. You know, so yeah, so then we wonder why our communities and our society are in the condition that they are, because if you go straight to the foundation of the home, the home life right. as individuals, right. we see the, the chaos. We've seen how the enemy has been trying relentlessly to dismantle the family. We mm -hmm. see it not only with our with spouses in the marriage, but also now with our children and their identity. Oh now, yeah, now it's just you know, and unfortunately he has, he has crippled the parents from taking their role as parents. That's right. You know, because he's done it through government That's because right. now you, you can't even discipline your children without, you know, being called DCYF after you. And now it's, it's called abuse. 
Yeah. Now is abuse, you know, and it's just, and we see that our children now are really growing up to be independent and very, Mm -hmm. I mean, it's sad. It's really sad, but I I am Mm -hmm. praying and I have been because the Lord has just been putting that in my heart with the youth in our generation and calling them forth because they're, they're in that slumber, they're in that stupor, you know, but again, you have the family that, you know, we really got to wake up to what, mm-hmm. what the enemy is doing. That's right. Amen. There's so much confusion. Kids don't even know who they are, what they are. Oh. I'm a girl today and, and I'm a dog tomorrow. <laughs> yes. I'm a horse on Tuesday and I'm a helicopter on Wednesday. What God, God is not a God of confusion. Yeah. You are what you are, and that is what you are. He mm-hmm. didn't mess up. He didn't change his mind. He didn't go, oops, I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's oh, ridiculous because the flesh wants what the flesh wants. Yes, yes, it does. It does. And we know that there's a lot of um, influence because we know there's a lot of influence in the other mountains of arts and entertainment and media, you have all these influence that are going through our eye gates, our ear gates, and they mm-hmm. are impacting, you know, so we have mm-hmm. to what guard ourselves, right? Because, you know, these things that are filtering through is is really causing so much confusion and fear and a whole bunch of other stuff. But yes, mm-hmm. I agree with you there, there, mm-hmm. there needs to be that reformation individual mm-hmm. first. Amen. Yeah. And regarding, you know, education, we kick God out of our schools and then we wonder why our schools are such a mess, you know, but we need to bring kingdom back into the classroom. You know, we need to speak life to these, Mm -hmm. to these kids. And we cannot say that a child is somehow not intelligent, not smart, not capable, simply because they're not reaching a benchmark that has been set there by a Babylonic Mm -hmm. system. Yes. When this child might be called as a prophet, they can discern atmospheres and things, you know, moving in their classroom. They can hear things going on in somebody else's heart. And this child has got all this information and the spirit being flooded at them. And you calling it ADHD? Why, my you goodness. Calling it, you know, oh, they, they did, they that. No. Many of these people, they have been labeled as incapable of consecration. They have a great deal of discernment. They can see things mm-hmm. in the spirit. They can mm-hmm. feel things in the atmosphere strong. They literally take on emotions and atmospheres yeah. as they go into places. And you you see them when, you, when you're testing them out. Well, they ain't so good at math, but the emotional intelligence is over mm-hmm. the chart. Why? Mm-hmm. Because the Lord has given them that wow. as the gift for transformation of their community. But we mm-hmm. do not... Uh, so much place esteem on that as we do on book smarts. And I'm not against, you know, going to school and getting your diploma and doing all that, but it has to go beyond that. Mm. We need to look at the whole man, not just the intellectual, because yeah. you can be very smart, but if your spirit is in ruins, you're not going to go anywhere in life. No, it's very difficult. Yes. Yes. My goodness. That is so true. That is true. Knowledge alone will not get you. You know, it's like they say knowledge will get you in there, but, you know, who's going to keep you in that place? You Mm -hmm. know, we need the spirit of God. We Mm -hmm. need him for everything, you Mm -hmm. know, and we need to teach our children Mm -hmm. about that as well now. And and, and it's not about, you know, waiting till they're older. That's right. um, Because supposedly they don't understand. Right. They they can understand how to work a telephone. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And they know mm-hmm. how to do these apps and they can play these games Come without not even instructions. They just mm-hmm. figure it out, right? Mm-hmm. If they have all the smarts for all that, believe yeah. me, rest assured that they have the smarts to understand Holy Spirit and operate Amen. in the gift. Amen. You know, Come so, on. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I think sometimes we use that as a cop out so that we parents can avoid the difficult subjects and the conversations we don't want to have. We're like, well, I'm going to try to avoid this uncomfortable conversation as long as I can. So I'll keep putting it off until they're older because they're too little to understand. But there's no junior Holy Spirit. No, there is no junior Holy Spirit. You know, so Mm -hmm. I'm going to share with you something that happened uh, when my my. My middle child was in uh, in second grade. There was this little girl who had a huge crush on him. And she wanted to do everything in her power to get his attention. Mm. So she went and sat down uh, 
next to him at recess. And she's like, hi, Elijah. And he's like, hi. And they start talking. And out of nowhere, he says to her, illusion, are you re ready to meet Jesus? She's like, no. What is that? <laughs> he says to her, did you know that one day this whole world is going to go up in flames? Jesus is going to come back and whoever does not have him in their heart is going to go straight to hell. Are you ready to go to hell? She's wow. like, no. Are you ready to go to heaven? You will, yeah, I want to. Okay, pray this prayer after me. He grabs her hand and he leads her to the Lord. Wow. <laughs> he's, like, he's eight years old. And I didn't tell him mm -hmm. to do it. Mm -hmm. I didn't teach him to do it. The Holy Spirit used wow. a moment when she was close to him, trying to get something from him. And the Lord <laughs> saw an entrance. The Lord's like, there it is right there. I'm going to use that opportunity. He led her to the Lord. Wow. Wow. So she wanted to come and get herself a boyfriend, but she left with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. <laughs> she, got, she definitely didn't expect she got that. more than she, she bargained really for. Good deal. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, much that's better amazing. deal. Yes, that's amazing that at that young age, but it should be. We should never limit. You're right. You know, we have a tendency to say, oh, well, you know, little, there is no junior Holy Spirit. That a little bitty baby Holy Spirit, hold, the same Holy Spirit that's in an adult is inside a child if they accept the Lord Jesus Christ, right? They've accepted right. him. So Holy Spirit is, is within right. them. So mm -hmm. it's being able to raise them up as well. And I think a lot mm -hmm. of it, you know, some of the excuses that either the person you know, parents don't know how, or yeah. they're not even entering themselves, you That's know? Right. So, you know, right. there has to be that place where, you know, the parents are there too, you know? That's right. Um, yeah. Amen. Wow. Amen. Yeah. yeah. And we need to, we need to take our roles as parents, you know, we're allowing too much of the government to, to raise our children because we just want to pass the kids off to the system. Mm. But, you know, it was never supposed to be, this way, you know, we were supposed to be established as one nation under God, mm -hmm. indivisible with liberty and justice for all. But we're not seeing justice. We're not mm -hmm. seeing, you know, equality, much less equity. Mm -hmm. It's all about this or that or people squashing down the ones at the bottom, making sure that they make it extra hard in order for you to have a comfortable life to be able to provide a good living for your children. And because they make it so hard, parents end up working so long yes. and so many hours mm. and you don't get to spend yeah. time with your kids. You don't get to be with your family. Mm. And so again, the education system ends up raising your kids. The government ends up taking over your family because you're so tired and you're so bored out of your mind and you're so frustrated that apart from the Lord and any revelation, you start looking at other things to fill that void. And pretty soon you're getting into drugs, you're getting into alcoholism, things get out of control and they take your kids away from you. Wow. Wow. That is true. That is true. I think, you know, especially, you know, with having to have, you know, two parents working and, you know, because things are getting inflated and, you know, people got to work, <laughs> the rents are ridiculous. Oh, yeah. I mean, just like, oh my goodness. So yeah, Absolutely. you know, you're not home. So the children no. are left to raise themselves, you know, and not have that time with the family. So you're right. You know, there's the, the mountain of family definitely needs to be influenced and impacted just as every other uh, mountain. Because I, I think about when you speak about um, education, mm -hmm. it reminds me of the woman, I don't remember her name, that it only took one woman to go in there and to remove prayers from school because mm -hmm. she felt yeah. her son does not yeah. need to yeah. be part of this. And you know what? Right. She pressed through pre one woman, pressed, mm -hmm. through, pressed through until she got her way. Mm -hmm. And it's like, for me, it's like, we need to start influencing these mountains as well. Where is Where are the believers that are going to go into the education system, yeah. that will go into these places and be able to, guess what, be just as annoying as that lady was to them? You know, I think about the widow in the Bible. That's right. About right, she was per man. She wasn't Ooh. giving that judge any rest. He was like, no. man, let's let's give her whatever she wants just to get rid of her, right? <laughs> so we have to be that relentless and and putting more um, focus, you know, on yes, on what our children are even learning because there's a lot of things that parents have no clue what's going on in the school. They don't know their curriculum. That's right. What's going That's on. Right. So is you got to you got to get involved somehow. 
you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, right. I really believe we we need to start making some noise. Come on, it's so true. And you know, and and even you being a an entrepreneur too, and, and building things for God, and 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 pointing people to creative ways of doing, uh, you know, jewelry and all these things. You know, I would say it's been about. I think it's been over six months now. I was in between that waking up and, and still asleep where you start to feel things around you, but you're not quite opening your eyes yet. Mm -hmm. And I had, I would say like a dream slash vision. And in this dream and this vision, I don't usually see these things, but the Lord showed me. It was really weird. I saw these demons with these weird, long, elongated faces and these buck teeth. And they were yellow. They had really long, elongated uh, mm -hmm. eyes. And they were very tall, very skinny, this very weird clothes. And then I saw all these women walking down this catwalk. And they were doing exactly as the demons were telling them to do. Wow. And those who would not do what they were told to do, the demons would break their hands. They would break their arms. They would break their legs so they couldn't go. Mm. And when I woke up completely, I said, Lord, what was that? He said, that's the spirit behind the fashion industry. Wow. It's wow. perverted. Yeah. yeah. Having men wearing women's clothes, having wow. women wearing men's clothes. And it's not about pants. We're not wearing pants. We're not wearing right. makeup. I'm not into all that. Mm -hmm. It's literally twisting people's identity so that you don't even longer know who you are. And you will see somebody in the street. You're like, what's that? What, what was that? And you yeah. don't want to go up and ask, right, but you're right. just straight up confused. You're like, well, who? Yeah. And that's the, that's the enemy trying to twist people's yeah. identity. My goodness. Wow. And there's a spirit behind that. So the Lord is calling his church to rise <laughs> up in that mountain of business, that mountain of art yeah. and entertainment to start releasing more Christian movies in good quality. Mm -hmm. None of this cheesy stuff, B movie stuff that nobody wants to watch. Yes. And Lord is yes. raising up creative people. Yes, he is. Yes. Yes. I agree with that. Absolutely. Whereas, you know, because I, I think we focus so much on our spiritual gifts that we do yeah. not focus on the talents That's and right. the skills that he has given us as yeah. creative people, because we carry the DNA of our creator, yeah. our father. Yeah, we yeah, have yeah. a creative Amen. DNA. So Amen. instead of tapping into that, you know, it's we 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 get stuck in just the spiritual gifts. And it's like, my God, what has God given to you? Maximize that so that you can impact these mountains, so that Amen. you can make a difference. And I am seeing Amen. an increase. Um, and, and I and I love it is in, in the uh movies, like they're yes. creating movies. I'm seeing yes. an impact on that, which is awesome, it's amazing. Yes. But again, this is the key though. We can have all these creative things, movies, businesses, and all this stuff. But we need support for our own. That's right. You know, That's right. It's like if you know there's people that have, you know, mo a movie that they're creating or there's mm -hmm. a Christian movie out there. Well, mm -hmm. why don't you flood the theaters and, mm -hmm. and begin to watch that versus you're waiting for it to come out on Netflix? You know, yet you'll go watch one of the yeah. other, you know, worldly movies. Come you're on. okay to pay the $20 that it costs to get a ticket. But for That's that right. Christian movie, you're going to wait to comes on netflix you know, the, <laughs> yeah that's unfortunate you know and then you have no truth you know you got businesses that you know my goodness you know they're christian but why don't we go and use the services or buy the goods that they're 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 creating so that we can make an impact and influence but instead no. we're gonna go somewhere else because right. and let me just share this. Sometimes, unfortunately, just because you're a Christian business mm -hmm. does not mean that you know what that you can be taken advantage of where people don't even want to pay you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, don't it's true. Want, they don't want to give you the value it's right. of what you do because yeah. you know they expect everything free, I guess, at some point. Freely but receive, it, freely give. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I mean, it's like, I get it, you know, but, you know, how we're going to make an impact right. if we don't support right. one 
another, That's you know, right. is, is, is very key. And I always say this, you know, apostle that, you know, I don't know if you see, but when you have, when I was working in New York, I worked mm -hmm. at a fashion industry mm -hmm. you know, in that garment district in New York. Mm -hmm. And so the owners were Jewish. No. And I tell you their stories, but what I, was amazing, but how they build and because they're successful is because they help one another. Yes. See, they don't even go outside yeah. of, of their culture. Meaning mom. they sit and they help one another mm -hmm. to build. And That's it's right. like for us, we're, we're competing against uh -huh. one another, you know, There's... instead of coming together. And this goes mm -hmm. across the line, whether it's, you know, a business or whether it's ministry, Come we on. start competing with one another and mm -hmm. says, okay, well, you know, oh, well, we got to one up on that one. I see what they're doing. Hold up. Let's make our flyers a little bit bigger. <laughs> Let's, you know, let, you know, let's offer some donuts or whatever it may be to try to attract people instead of working together. You know, because for, sometimes I said, Lord, I said, maybe it's me, but I say to myself, how much more momentum and impact can we have yeah. in this world if we were to be able to link up together in that yeah. manner? And don't get me wrong, you do have to be discerning because right. you have some people that will talk the talk and want to unify, mm -hmm. but their intents are wrong, you know, That's because right. you do have to know who you labor among, you That's know. Right. And, and so, yes, but man, when you have like minded people, the hearts, guess what? Ah, there's a spirit, a, a, a spiritual unity that will cause people to now move and gain momentum into this earth. We need that at this time. Amen. Amen. And you know, um, you, you can't release the word until you've earned the right to speak. And part of positioning yourself to earn the right to speak is learning to serve. Mm. And so how you position yeah. yourself before the King of Kings and serving the Lord first will also determine your ability to persuade and subdue all earthly kingdoms. Amen. And we see that in the life of Joseph, we see that in the life of Nehemiah, and we see that yeah. in the life of Esther. Yeah, you have to do things a certain way. There is a protocol. Mm. There is a thing oh. that we have to go through. It's called honor. Mm. It's called submission. It's called servanthood. Mm -hmm. It's called being led of the Lord, not trying to up somebody uh, here, trying to cut somebody down, trying to lie about someone, trying to make your business better, trying to make your ministry better. You need to go to the Lord and serve him first. Amen. And then as you go through the, the process, he, he refines you. He begins yeah. to trust you with that voice and with that platform. But he's mm. not going to give you nothing if you're not trustworthy. So mm. you need to earn the right to speak before he ever allows you to have a voice in public. My goodness. He's not handing you the mic if your heart is wrong. Yes, yes. And also, he's not going to hand you the mic if you're going to become an echo. Oh. Because, you know, uh, you know, and what do I mean by becoming an echo? Well, you begin to sound like everybody else, but That's you, right. where right. you, you're speaking everyone else's message, releasing everybody else's prophetic word, but you're not going into the secret place to get your own. Come on. You know, you're not studying the word. You're not, you're not seeking him, you know, mm -hmm. and it's just like, well, you know, then you're wondering why, you know, many people are not liking your posts. <laughs> because you know what people can actually discern and they can tell whether it's something that's authentic from the throne room or mm -hmm. whether it is an echo, that's you know, right. you're just repeating something that someone's been saying, or you've actually even copied some of the stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just like, listen, the only way you get an authentic word that's going to bring reformation and change from you going into that place of reformation yourself, my God, it's going to have a sound that's going to be so distinct that you Man. don't even have to say many words. You just have Man. to say a few words and my goodness, it just cuts through and, and, it, and it touches Man. the hearts of the people that brings that reformation within them, Man. you know? So, and, and, and we need that today. We mm -hmm. need that. Today. So you're mm -hmm. right. You know, the Lord mm -hmm. is not going to give you, well, the Lord's not going to give it to you, but that doesn't stop people from taking it. That's right. That's right. Because you do have people that will go on their own and begin to, you know, speak. <laughs> speak. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, but yeah. Wow. Yeah. But, but it's, it's a, it's an echo. Amen. And it's a, it's not, 
the true thing. It's a counterfeit. It's, it's a carbon copy. Mm. But if you hold it up to the light, Jesus, there ain't no watermark. They didn't go through the water. Wow. Wow. There's no watermark. Mm. It's just a counterfeit. It's laundered money. Jesus. And and so there's no there's no authority. There's no power in it because they didn't get it from the secret place. Mm. And so the posture of our heart is crucial to the impact of our message. Because when we posture our heart right, the Lord also gives us the favor and the access that we need. Yes. Mm. My goodness. And you're so right. You know, it's like they speak that, you know, the word says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Amen. So what is abundant in your heart? Because that's what you're mm -hmm. going to be. You know, and it is so evident, so clear that the people need more than just a word that sounds good. That's right. They, they need a word from the throne room, something that's mm -hmm. going to shift them that's and right. cause even that trembling in their spirit because they heard the sound of Holy Spirit. They did not hear, you know, Apostle Jennifer. They did not hear Maggie. They didn't hear. No, they heard Holy Spirit and they yeah within themselves to Amen. now cause them to seek the Lord for themselves Amen. because we're in that place that I tell people listen if you're gonna come to me I'm not I'm not going to draw you unto me I am going to always point you back to the father Amen. even if you're coming for whether it's a prophetic word or direction or counsel is wonderful we can we can help someone but listen I need for you to be dependent upon him. The same right. way that I was. And we need to guide the people back up to the Lord so that they can learn, hello, to, to build their the foundation based on Christ, not based on Maggie, not based on mm -hmm. Jennifer, not That's based right. on, you know, the most popular prophet, apostle, mm -hmm. whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. You know, God is going to cause you to build. And when he causes you to build, it's not going to look like someone else's. You know, mm -hmm. and it's okay because mm -hmm. you have to go by the blueprint of what the Lord gives you, especially in this time and hour. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's not going to look like what we've always done in the past. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I tell people, I said, listen, you know, if you have one of those uh, foundation inspectors, the religious Pharisees, inspector and they'll come and they'll look at your blueprints they'll probably say oh no this is all wrong you got to shut down this is not how we did it all this time mm -hmm. you know, it will shut you down and it's like well no no this is what the lord has given me Amen. and therefore i'm going to build according to his blueprint and it's okay Amen. it's Amen. okay because we're Amen. in a new place in a new era where God is shifting things and causing new things to spring forth. Like we've been saying all these years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Amen. And it's going to take time. It's not going to be overnight mm -mm. because reformation takes time and it takes hard work, but we must be willing to tear some things down to rebuild them with a stronger foundation. Yeah. You know, choosing to ignore faults in the foundation will only cost us precious time, sweat and tears later on when it starts to lean and then the structure eventually crumbles because we did not lay it on the foundation of Christ. Mm -hmm. So we must not be afraid to start again. No. And I think so many people are afraid to start again. And it's okay. You know, they say, oh, well, I've been in ministry for 20 years. I can't restart this. I can't relaunch this. Mm -hmm. And if the Lord is saying, hey, that model is not working anymore. That's you need right. to. Yes. You need to change it up. Not for the sake of being seeker friendly or whatever. No, but because there is something that needs to be accomplished in the spirit. Yes. And relying on a program or a model just because everybody else was doing it in the 90s and their churches were packed out. Mm. And the Lord is saying, Jesus, I'm not in it. I'm not in it. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I know you still have a lifetime membership. <laughs> but I, I jumped that boat a long time ago and you need to do the same. Yes, yes. Because I really believe where there was that model of building and planting churches, we are now building and planting people. Yes. There has to be the building of the people. And, you know, and that's one of the things the Lord has uh, 
uh, revealed to me is going back to the basics, going back to the simplicity of the gospel, mm -hmm. you know, um, leading people to him, you yes. know, teaching people, you know, to, to pray. You'll be surprised. There's so many people oh. that don't know how to pray. Yeah. I don't have an established intimate relationship with him. You know, yeah. anybody hears that be like, oh my God, that's so elementary. Well, you know what? We've gone so far away from it that the stuff that we're doing, you have a lot of people that don't even know the what basics. the foundation is in the basics. They've yeah. never been to discipleship. They've yeah. never come to, if, if they were to have to defend their faith, they would not know what to say. They wouldn't know. Yeah. They would be torn down by questions by, you know, um, atheists or you know, non-believers, whatever. And and they'll sit there like, uh, you know, and it's just like, no, it's time to come back to the basics. Mm -hmm. It's okay. That doesn't make you less than. That's right. You know, it's, it's about coming back to that simplicity where God can really work in us. Cause I think, you know, sometimes we, we think we too big and we're too grown already oh. that we can't, Oh no, what basically. We're too old. It's embarrassing. You know, it's like, it's like a, it's like a 50 year old man with gray hair riding a tricycle. <laughs> oh, that's an image right there. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But you know, it is, you know, again, you know, before and we'll say it again before the the revival that so many people in so many years and praying through and i really believe that's wonderful we've been persistent in praying for that revival but again the reformation has to come first Amen. in order to sustain that's the right. revival because we've had many uh glimpses of revival here and there but they mm -hmm. fade out they fizz out you know and it's because you need substance to yes. be able to hold that revival mm -hmm. and it comes through reformation things mm -hmm. have to change it's okay to change things a lot of people are not good with change mm -hmm. you know and i get mm -hmm. it they get stuck you know and and i'm gonna say this because maybe someone needs to hear it but you know in the sense that if if you remain in the same place year after year year after year and you're so stuck on your traditions and cultures and how you've done things all alone you're even stuck in how god speaks you only yeah. believe that god speaks only this way you know right. i'm going to say this and you're going to miss your time and hour of visitation mm -hmm. because you are going to be so stuck in what's been done in the past that mm -hmm. your eyes will not see what's being done here in the present. Mm -hmm. So it's time to shift out of that. It's time to ask Holy Spirit. Yes, ask him, not us. Ask him. Get real with him. Get into a secret place with him. Lord, what is it that you need to actually detox me from? What mm -hmm. are some things that I need to unlearn? What are some things that I need to come away? What are the new things? What are some stuff I need to let go so that I can have my hands open now to receive the new? Amen. You know, because otherwise you're going to miss it. Amen. Amen. That's right. And, you know, we need to be willing to walk those streets and claim them for the Lord. We need to be willing to to stand in the gap and cry out for our communities. You know, I'm yeah. all for I'm all for feeding programs and for feeding kitchens and for taking care of the homeless. I think that's all great. And yeah. I think it's wonderful and it serves a purpose. But we really need to go back to that place of intercession when we're in our faith yeah. saying, God, search me and know me first. Mm. Search me and know me first. Yeah, my, my community needs you, Lord. My community needs a move of the spirit, mm -hmm. Lord. Our our homeless shelters are full, Lord. Our our women's shelters are full. We need a revival in the family. Yes. We need a revival in the government. We need a revival in the educational mountain, Lord. Mm -hmm. Start with me. Personal yes. revival. Yes. Personal revival above yes. All. yes. When you begin to, uh, you know, when you begin to pray. Mm -hmm. For these things as if it really pertains to you. That's right. When you pray for family and other families as a whole, as you would pray for your own son and daughter. That's right. Because you know there's something different when it's your own that you're praying yes. for 
let's there is talk about you were talking about birth and trimesters and all man this is like a travail like you're giving yeah. birth you know yeah. because you feel the the pain you feel the yeah. urgency you know for this prayer to come forth for god to move within yes. our our children that is the same intensity that we ought to have when we're praying for these other uh, mountains of influence in society yes we know listen if even the government mountain people said, well, you know what? I don't get mixed with government. You know, you don't have to be mixed with government, but you know how to pray for them because the Bible clearly right. says mm -hmm. that we ought to pray for them. Even if you do not like the people that are in power right now. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter, you know, not for anything, but even more, you should pray even more intensely mm -hmm. in it because of it, right? So, mm -hmm. so that, that it could be an impact. So we have to come to that place of yes, interceding, travailing, that art of travailing. And you know, I've heard people say, well, you don't need to go through all that. You know, God listens, God hears us. All we have to do is pray. Listen, there's a time for that. You know, there is a time where, you know what, by faith, yes, everything's by faith, you pray. But there is something about when you can tarry, when you can come to that place of travailing in yes. the spirit, okay, there's something that begins to move in the spirit realm that is so strong because that is the place, that is the grounds, that is the mm -hmm. battleground right there. And I think it's learning how to get connected to the spirit round so that we can be more effective you know we do need to cry out we need to cry out for all these seven mountains of influence we really need to partake because if we're not doing something physically to make an impact my goodness then do something spiritually to make that impact amen amen i mean jesus seed occupy occupy till i come we're and not occupy, occupy. No, you're not. <laughs> you know, occupying is going to require for you to invade that space. That's right. You know, and, and in order for you to conquer, right, you have to really take things by force. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. a time where the, the meaning begging, you know, there's no begging. You know, this is this is a thing that, you know, you need to understand who you are in Christ, the authority that you carry in his name. My goodness, in his name and being able to go and govern and legislate with the word of god into the spirit realm where you stand there because you know we we're, we we we're good at speaking the the christianese language as far as that hey you know i'm a king you know and and mm -hmm. i sit in heavenly places well what are you doing sitting in heaven are you sleeping are you napping like what are you doing like you know when you're seated in heavenly places you're seated with him Yes. And when you see it with Jesus, guess what? He is interceding. He is mm -hmm. ruling. He is reigning from that mm -hmm. place of the throne. So we too are to be doing the same thing, Amen. you know, and, and it requires for us to know the word of God, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's what, when we speak, that's what is being established because the word of God is so powerful. And, you know, when that's what we declare and that's what starts to shift things, you know, but it takes an active part of us yes. you know and we can't always say well jennifer can do it <laughs> jennifer's so good at it jennifer you do it <laughs> i'll just take you to do it you know and it's like no you know what is your part in the kingdom of god Come on. amen what is your part amen. so it's being able to do that amen. wow amen, amen. I, I I can only imagine what would have happened if Joseph would not have done his part. He said, I don't want to get involved in government. Mm. Then all the children of Israel would have perished in the famine because wow. he didn't want to get involved in government. Yeah, That's not a God. I just want to preach behind the pulpit. My I don't want to get involved in politics. You're mm. the very one that God is raising up Jesus. to deliver his people. Uh, mm. Wow, that's so good because it's true. Every time there is a situation, God always del um, raises a deliverer. Mm -hmm. you know? And it's, you know, and it's so, you know, it is so easy, you know, to complain and um, point out what's wrong, whether it's in the church or any of these seven mountains mm -hmm. of influence, right? It's easy to do that. You know, I I've been guilty of that myself. And it's just like, okay, well, how can you be part of the solution? Yes. 
you know, and I get it. Not everyone can be physically in a place or, you know, there's maybe they don't have, you know, the, the knowledge or whatever it may be, you know, but there's always something you can do. Mm -hmm. There's always that, that prayer, that intercession. Yeah. That's also that giving financially mm -hmm. that someone else may be able to, you know, has been equipped for it. And maybe you're not because you, you that's not your lane. Well, amen. Then you know what helps someone to get there, but amen. there's always something that you can be doing That's praying right. whatever it may be you yeah. know so we need to really the body of christ have to engage in this time we can't yeah. sit in our you know in our couches like little these potatoes you know like the couch potatoes and waiting for someone else to do it because then those are the very ones that are complaining about what's going on around That's them right. amen amen so we do need to come yeah wow amen. yeah amen. amen this is an hour to to build disciples, not just a fan base of ourselves any longer. Yes. And and the Lord is calling us to that. And the Lord is calling us to go deeper with him and to, mm. and to really go back to basics and to really seek his face. Yes. And then from that place, everything else is going to flow. And, mm. and, and it's going to be in the right timing because it's going to be led of his spirit. He's going to be the one orchestrating the move, not us. Yes. And then he's going to get the glory and we'll be happy just to get out of the way and let people enter in. <laughs> yes, that is so true. That is so true. Yes, I, I truly believe that um, God is definitely moving. And it's wonderful because, listen, I see everything that's going on. You know, I try not to watch the news too much, but I do watch. I do hear, you know, what's going on because you also have to know what to pray for. Right. That's right. Um, so you can't be totally ignorant of what's going on. But. Even then, you know, it's, this is the way I look at it, Apostle. This is not my reality. This is not my reality. When they're talking about inflation, when they're talking about diseases, when they're talking about this and that and mm -hmm. war and all this, this is not my reality. Mm -hmm. My reality is what the word of God says, Man. you know, knowing that my God is powerful, that I can stand and believing that this, regardless of the inflation may come, that God is going to supply because why his word says so. Why? Because that's who he is. You know, when he can come and protect us, my God, that there is no fear. We shouldn't be walking in fear. Amen. If we know the God that we serve, the one that we preach about, my mm -hmm. goodness, we will not have fear. We will walk still proclaiming his goodness, Amen. not allowing the anxieties of what's going on with the world, because my God, our kingdom is great and our king is even greater. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yes. yes. The vault of heaven is not running out of gold. It's not running no. out of silver. No, Nothing. no. Listen, I was telling, I remember a friend of mine, we were talking, I said, listen, I'm so crazy to believe this, that God can rain down some fried chicken from heaven. Okay. Cause if he did the quails in the wilderness yeah. and, and he, can, he can get some Hawaiian punch out of the rocks. Come on. <laughs> you know, it comes to a place that what faith do we have? Because this is That's the funny right. thing, the apostle that we'll sit here and we will quote well, God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. <laughs> well, if you really believe that, you wouldn't be so concerned with what you're going to eat and what you're going to drink. That's right. You'll be crazy enough to believe that he can rain some stuff out of heaven. That's At least that's my reality. <laughs> Amen. You know, I that's tell right. you, there's something about when you, when you let God. You know, we always say, let go, let God, right? Amen. When we really let go and let God, things will begin to change in ways that it will increase your faith. You will remain with joy. You will remain mm -hmm. with peace. Mm -hmm. My God, no one can take that away from you. So mm -hmm. stop saying that the enemy stole it because he didn't steal it. You gave it to him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We gotta stop giving him stuff. Mm -hmm. We gotta walk walk in the word of the Lord. My goodness. Amen. So yeah. So whew, amen. You know, I, I thank you for, for sharing about that yes. reformation, especially making an emphasis on the reformation of our individual mm -hmm. self, you know, because you're right, you know, you said something about many streams, right? Yes. Together. And yes, I really believe that convergence will yeah. come in that sense, you know, but there's some there's some uh, boulders 
that are in those streams that are blocking <laughs> that convergence that needs to be poof, removed. Come on. Yeah. And that's where the reformation comes in. Let Come the Lord on. remove those boulders so that we Amen. can flow together. Yes. So you know, good. So that is that is awesome. Wow. Is there any mm -hmm. last things you want to share? Anything you want to um release to anyone, to the people, whatever it is that the Lord um may want to lead you or pray, whatever. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Um, I, I do want to pray um for 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 those who who are feeling a tug in their heart to step out and uh to go against the grain, but they're feeling the pressure and they're feeling really the the chatter of the enemy saying you don't have what it takes and you're not you're not mm, come on. you can't do this thing because if you, as soon as you do everybody's going to turn their back on you mm -hmm. and they're looking they're, they're they're trying to count the cost and they're saying is it worth me giving up everything mm -hmm. in order to be obedient and i want to say to you absolutely it is 100 percent. whoever leaves mother father mm -hmm. brother come sister <laughs> Yeah, leave this and so much more. We no, must be willing to leave everything behind in order to follow the Lord, because there is where our fulfillment, there is where our our true joy lies mm -hmm. at His feet and His presence. There is fullness of joy mm -hmm. at His yeah. right hand or pleasures evermore. Anything that this world has to offer you in the mm -hmm. way of prestige, affirmation, titles success none of those things even compare mm. to being in the center of his will and doing what he's called you to do so today i just want to release you from yeah. that do not fear mm. if he has called yeah. you he has also placed everything within you that you need in order to be successful mm -hmm. Do not try to skip the process. Do not try to jump the process. Do not try to avoid the process. Do it may be hard and difficult and painful. Stay in it. Yes. Because as you stay in it, you mm -hmm. will begin to see how he begins to form himself in you. And when it's done, you'll be looking at the mirror. And you know what? You'll be, you'll be able to see it's Jesus. Jesus. And that is where you want to be. Yeah. Where you look back in the mirror and say, I don't see myself anymore. I see Jesus now. Amen. And that is what we want. So, Father, we just thank yeah. you, Lord. Mm. We thank yes, you for Lord. what you're doing in this hour, Father mm. God. And I just pray right now, Lord God. Mm. In the name of Jesus, mm. Father God. That you would give people the courage mm. to step out yeah. and what you call them to do without mm. fear of the future right now father god i come against every spirit of lying every yes. spirit of manipulation every spirit of witchcraft and bullying yes, yes Ooh, and i break off that assignment mm. right now in the name of jesus father god hallelujah and i say lord god the day will be established father god mm. The day will be firm, Father mm -hmm. God. They will not be shaky or afraid. Yeah, they will not be taking yes. opinion polls. Yeah. But I thank you, Holy Spirit. You're the one who releases the blueprint. You're the one who gives them the wisdom to apply the information and to walk it out, to begin to build that foundation. Yeah. Upon you, Christ the rock, we stand. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Upon you, Christ the rock, they yeah. stand. Yes. And everything else that has been shaky ground, everything else that has been sand. I thank you, Father God, for filtering that out and placing them into a place of consecration where they can give birth to the vision and to the promise and to the blueprint that you have for them in this hour. I thank you, Father God, even for sending them midwives to help and yes, push in the spirit, push this thing mm -hmm. out and to coach them and to see yes. them through the delivery of the vision. And even beyond that, Father God, sending mm -hmm. them mentors and people to help them see this thing come yes. to maturity. We thank you, Lord God, that you are raising up a remnant of people that are not afraid to follow you into every terrain or they're not yes. taking opinion polls but they are going with mm. you to the mountains to the valley to the high place to the low place everywhere because mm. they know father that in your will there is protection there yeah. is provision there is fulfillment there is joy and true peace mm -hmm. in the holy spirit when we are with you 
walking mm -hmm. hand in hand no matter what things look like on the outside lord you are our all in all and you are a great and exceeding reward lord and that they the yes. end of their life they would hear from you lord well mm -hmm. done thy good and faithful servant lord yeah. So that is our prayer today, Father God. Find yes. us faithful, Lord. That you would find us faithful in our assignment, Lord God. That we would not look to the left or to the right, but that we would keep our eyes on you and you alone, knowing that you are the one, Father, that we are here to please, that you are the one that we give an account to, Father God, that you are the one that we are to fear, not man not the devil but you lord it is you that we have to give an account to at the end of all and we thank you father god we don't see it lightly we don't count it lightly that you chose us that you called us for such a time as this for many are called but few are chosen so find us faithful lord god yes lord. do not pass us over father god we don't just want to be called we want to be chosen to do what you called us to do and to be found right there, plowing alongside our brothers and sisters in the spirit. And we give you thanks, we give you glory, we give you honor, Lord, for what you've done during this broadcast today. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I really hope and pray that those that have tuned in will and will tune in later, that you really feel that push and, and, and that courage to rise up into what God has called you to do, that you do not have to build like everybody else, mm -hmm. build upon what God has given to you. And I pray that there will be those, just like Apostle Jennifer has prayed, that people will come alongside of you to help you to build. But I want to say this. Do not dismiss those God will send you because they don't look or fit the type that you're used to. Mm -hmm. Because I tell you, a lot of times we miss stuff because they're not packaged the way we think they ought to be packaged. So I just want to say, you know, pray about those that come alongside you. Ask the Lord, is did you send this person to help me build and indeed embrace them and, and, and build. But I, I just want to thank you, Apostle Jennifer, for coming oh, here and for just sharing you. that word of reformation, especially again, an individual reformation is needed so that we can come into that reformation of the ecclesia and be able mm -hmm. to stand, stand so powerful, that governing body, my goodness, you know, that just like the Bible said, just like Jesus said, the health cannot prevail against it, That's you right. know? So I thank you for bringing that message. And if anyone wants to connect with Apostle Jennifer Foster, you can connect with her on Facebook. Is there another way um, that they can reach you? Yeah, well, then, you know, the main way that usually people connect is through uh, Facebook. If they have a prayer request or anything like that, I'm happy to take prayer requests on Messenger and I'll pray for them. And I'll, I usually, uh, I actually don't just say, God bless you guys, I'm praying for you. No, no, I'll actually record the message and send it awesome. to you from me. I'm not just going to say, Amen, yes, touch and agree, bye. No, no, no. <laughs> you ask me for prayer. I'm going to pray. And if the Lord says sing, I might even sing over you. Oh, that's beautiful. So. <laughs> that That's really good. I, I like that, you know, and I think that's really powerful and needed. Yeah. So if you guys, again, connect with her, you know, again, I thank you for your time. I thank you for sharing your heart. You know, we're always kind of in tune to things. And I love that about you, you know, um, and I just ask the Lord to bless you, you know, that he will bless everything that you're putting your hands to in this season, everything that you have been plowing for, the new things that God has given to you, that you will move forth in his direction. And I know that you are because you're a woman that follows after the Lord. And, you know, and because you do, you prosper in it, you know, and many around you are blessed because of your obedience to the Lord, because that is key. People don't understand when you have obedience, there's blessings that come with the obedience, you know. So um, thank you so much for joining and thank you, everyone, for tuning in for tonight's uh, broadcast. I just pray that God will just 
Oh my God. Wow. You tonight. I, I pray that even in dreams that the Lord yes. will begin to reveal blueprints mm -hmm. to you, that he will begin to give you the instructions, divine instructions that he will give those that are without a vision, vision on tonight. I am praying that God will just blow your mind tonight in the name of Jesus. So everyone have a blessed night. Good night until next time. <laughs> Bye-bye.